Hi everybody and welcome to episode number 15. Today we're going to take a look at a USB isolator project that I just started a couple days ago and it's actually pretty far along. I uh, just need to play with the silk screen layer now a little bit in KiCad. Uh, you know, move component values around, you know, put my name on it and stuff like that, and the open source hardware logo. But today we're only going to be taking a look at the, uh, at the schematic, not the actual layout. We're going to go over uh, some of my thoughts that went into it, uh, some of the things that I've discovered about USB in general that I've learned along the way, and um, some of my reasoning behind the project. So the reason that I decided to do a USB isolator is a couple things. I figured that it would be a useful addition to you know, add to uh, uh, my, my business's products, uh, that it would be something that's relatively self-contained, again, rel relatively, I say relatively for everything, quick uh, to, to do. You know, it, only took me, it only took me a couple days of working on it, a couple hours here and there to, to get what I think is a pretty reasonable result. And um, so, so that I could release one of these USB isolated designs as open source hardware. I've noticed that a couple of people uh, have done some projects in the past few years and are selling kits or whatever on them, um, but they're not actually open source hardware. So I figured I'd take some of the changes that I've noticed that some people have recommended for them, incorporate it all together, and well, make it open source hardware. So let's go ahead and take a look at the schematic. I've got it printed out right behind me, and we'll go over it. All right, so here we've got it. Here we've got the, uh, again, kind of low quality printout of the uh, KiCad schematic. So let me just go over the main parts, and then we'll zoom in on each little section, and I'll give some commentary about what's going on, and uh, maybe you guys will learn something from it. So over here, we've got the upstream USB connector, so this would be, say, attached to your PC. I've got the actual USB isolator, which is based off of the analog devices ADUM4160. And over here, the downstream USB connector, so this goes towards your device. The 5 volt linear regulator circuit. Uh, some people in their projects have used switching regulators. Um, but for, for this one, I decided just to put in a linear regulator to save some space and also for people that are interested in um, USB DACs, USB uh, ADCs, whatever, right? Uh, they, they, and they don't want that switching noise in it, whatever, right? But we've got some LEDs to indicate that the upstream and downstream uh, power is all good. Uh, so just some pull-ups for a couple of the pins, so I just separated that out. And a, uh, a, a switch to simulate a device disconnect to cause a USB bus event to convince the computer that um, something's been like unplugged or plugged back in. But I'll get more on about that later and why that's important. So first, let's, uh, let's talk about the USB connectors. All right, so here's the upstream USB connector. It's the exact same layout as the downstream one also. So uh, we'll only go over one of the two. So some, a couple of things to note here is that we've got the, uh, the, the pin from the bus here, right? So this, is, this would be your five volt line coming from your computer. And we've got it going through a ferrite bead. So I just used the inductor symbol in KiCad, whatever, but it's going to be uh, just a little ferrite bead uh, before going to the going to the board. And here for ground, we've also got a ferrite bead um, protecting the ground line. Uh, so for the for the data lines, they're just they just go off straight to the isolator. But the, the one thing that I did not know that I learned in my um, research that I was doing about USB on the internet, I came across this one, um, uh, I guess, I think it was an application note, I don't know, some sort of information sheet from Cypress uh, talking about proper USB um, procedures. And the, the one that they mentioned is that the two shield pins that are coming off, what you should do is not directly tie it to the ground of your uh, of your project, you know your 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 
your uh, your ground plane, but to actually connect it to your ground plane through a one meg resistor. This is one meg. Kind of having difficulty focusing here, and this is 4.7 nanofarads. That cap. Okay, so that's going to help protect against uh, you know uh, your the, the the shield on your USB cable acting as an antenna and stuff like that, picking up noise and then coupling it into your ground, and also ground noise from affecting the um, uh, data integrity of your of your or the integrity of your data uh, as it goes down the uh, your USB cable. So that's a couple of things that I learned and you should probably try to include in your own future projects. So here we've got the main USB isolator circuit. So we're just gonna go over a couple of things here that this device is capable of. So again, this is the ADUM4160, just so you guys can see it there better, a little bit. I got kind of, kind of messy handwriting, but uh, that's from Analog Devices. It's a USB isolator and what it's got on the inside are a bunch of transformers for all the uh, digital lines that, uh, and control lines and whatnot that actually have to go back and forth between the two halves. As with anything, when you're trying to isolate it, the idea is is that you don't have a common reference between one side and the other, just like with uh, uh, with a transformer, right? You're not going to have um, one side directly connected to the other side uh, of a transformer, right, between the primary and secondaries. Uh, unless, of course, that's what you're directly going for, but in general, you're not going to. So over here, we've got our data lines that were coming straight from the USB connector, and we're going to connect them to the uh, isolator through 24 ohm resistors. And this, these need to be 24 ohms, 1% tolerance, is what I've found. Whether that's part of the spec or not, I'm not sure, but that's what I keep uh, uh, keep hearing referenced. So inside this isolator chip, there are two 3.3 volt internal regulators to get the 3.3 uh, volts required for the uh, data lines. So when we connect our bus voltage here, so this is the five volts from the PC, right? So this is the upstream side, that's the downstream side. Connect our five volts here, and we've got our decoupling cap to ground here. Um, this on the inside is going to regulate to 3.3 volts and is going to come out here, this pin, which is labeled VDD1, okay? which I also have tagged right here as the same. And then you, ha and then you have to externally decouple that again using a uh, 0.1 mic cap. So on the upstream side here, we've got SPU, which is, I can't remember exactly what it stands for, but it's one of these control, uh, control pins for enabling the uh, pull-up resistors. I think they're pull-up, they might be pulled down, I can't remember. Uh, resistors on the upstream side. So that's what the U is for there, for making sure you realize it's for the upstream side. Um, so you need to you need to uh, hold this high during normal operation uh, to make sure that, well, it is going to be functioning normally. On the downstream side over here, we've got the same sort of thing. So, you know, same same basic layout. You've got the bus. So this, this here, this five, this five volts, you have to provide from uh, some other source, so either from some regulator you've got on your board or some externally regulated source or whatever. You need your 5 volts coming in here, and then it's of course got another 3.3 volt regulator on the inside, and it's going to regulate it down to, well, 3.3 coming out of VDD2, right? And then you'll have your new data pins, your downstream data pins, and then you've got this pin here, SPD, which is the same as SPU, but for the downstream side, and pin, all right? So pin also does more enabling and disabling, but you don't just always want to hold this one high. So what this is gonna allow us to do is by setting this low to the downstream side ground, okay? Of course, you don't. you never wanna tie it to that because it's not gonna make any sense. By, by connecting it to um, the downstream ground, you can simulate to the computer that the device has been unplugged, okay? And this is important because um, with, with the isolator, you might not always have access to 
uh, the ability to disconnect and reconnect the device from the computer because you know sometimes you might have to do that for whatever reason right you know you take your USB key and you you know you plug it in unplug it whatever right or or, or for some device you know uh, your uh, the software that you're using to interface with it goes okay now please disconnect it before proceeding to the next step um, with with a with with a USB isolator, there's two physical connections, right? There's the connection between the PC and the isolator on the upstream side, and the isolator and your device on the downstream side. So physically disconnecting both isn't going to help you. Disconnecting the upstream side might not always register as a disconnect on the downstream side, depending on what kind of device it is. You know, if it's being powered by the computer, if it's if okay, if it's Assuming it's going to be powered by the computer, if it was plugged directly in, you know, uh, a microcontroller or whatnot might still be free running, and it might need some initialization code to tell the you know PC and all this sort of jazz, right? So, what we're going to do is use this pin here, which allows us to trick the trick the bus and like the computer, the PC and everything, uh, into thinking that the device has been disconnected. So we're going to hook that up to a switch, keep it pulled high normally, push the switch, and it's going to connect it to ground. And then um, the PC will assume that a physical disconnection has been made. And when you release the button, it's been reconnected. And you didn't actually have to connect or disconnect anything and wear out your USB contacts. So that's pretty much it for the isolator. So let's take a look at some of the other components. So we're just going to take a quick look here at this 5 volt linear regulator circuit. It's really super basic. I don't actually know if I've got the pins in the right uh, uh, right order here for the for the uh, barrel connector, but it was just me taking a guess. And this is just a 7805 linear regulator, 10 mics on the input, 22 mics low ESR cap on the output. And uh, this is connected to the downstream ground, of course. We don't want it connected to the upstream ground, or else that would defeat the entire purpose of this. And this is what's providing our 5 volts to VBUS2, which is then, of course, going to go get internally regulated to 3.3 and drive the lines and everything, right? And also allow us to drive our device. So uh, important choices for the, this device is that it needs to be able to handle at least 500 milliamps of current for the USB... 2.0 spec, right? Because you you can devices can draw up to 500 milliamps, so half an amp it can draw up to at 5 volts. So your regulator needs to be able to handle that if you want it to, in general, handle any sort of USB 2.0 device you connect onto it that's behaving like it's plugged into a computer. Of course, some cell phones and whatnot can charge at higher um, higher currents, but they usually only do that if it's uh, one of those adapters that you plug into the wall, and then they have certain uh, basic, super basic control circuitry in them, basically just resistor dividers, uh, to let the device know that it's not plugged into a computer, but it's plugged into a dedicated charging receptacle to draw more current. So for us, really only have to worry about half an amp, so you got to pick a linear regulator that can do that and not get too too hot. So the last thing to talk about are just a couple of devices that I had at the bottom. Over here we've just got some indicator LEDs uh, going into 270 ohm resistors, uh, one for each of the upstream and downstream power supplies, uh, just so that you have a visual indication of of uh, whether all the power is functioning correctly, right? So this one would tell you if the PC is supplying power properly, and this one will tell you if your regulator circuit is also giving you power because um, you're going to need some of course. Over here we've got our pull-up resistor to SPU and SPD. Now I just remembered why you would want to drive these low. Okay, So now, now that I've just remembered this we're going to go over it. So SPU and SPD are the speed select for upstream and downstream. Keeping these high will set the speed and like the time constants and everything associated with the uh, um, with your with your data to USB 2.0 specs and pulling it low to their respective grounds will set them to you uh, the the uh, older USB 1.0 uh, speeds okay so it's important that that those are set correctly to what you want now nobody uses USB 1.0 anymore 
So instead of taking up the space that I was going to have for a uh, for a switch that can, because you have to keep them both. Uh, so like both of them either have, both of them have to be high or both of them have to be low. You can't mix and match speeds, right? Or else it just won't work. So I was going to include a switch uh, to a, a a a double pull, double throw switch. I believe that's it to control the two of them together uh, to either connect them both high or both low. Actually, I could have done this, sorry, I could have done that with a, a double pull single throw switch, right? So just connected or not connected. Um, and But it was taking up too much space and nobody uses USB 1.0 anyways. Pretty much everything that you can think of is at least 2.0 and newer things are 3.0 and this isn't going to work for 3.0 anyways. So might as well just tie them tie them high and be done with it, save that little bit of space, and instead make space for a uh, uh, push button to disconnect, to, to, uh, to simulate device disconnect um, for, for the PC and for the device, right? So you've got uh, your downstream supply, the 100K resistor connected to that pin labeled pin, pin labeled pin, yeah, that's right. And with a push button switch that just connects it to uh, downstream ground if you need to simulate a disconnect. So that's pretty much it for the entire schematic. So I hope you guys learned something. Uh, some of the big things to take away again are the one meg and 4.7 nanofarad capacitor that are connecting your USB shield to, uh, to your ground plane. The 24 ohm resistors that you should include, and um, just in general about about isolators. So that's about it. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Eventually, once I get this USB isolator ready for sale, I'll be uploading all the source materials up onto GitHub, just like the rest of my projects, to make sure that everything is open source hardware. Until then, what you guys can do to support me is, if you you know, if you haven't and you're interested please purchase my USB to GPIB adapter. Or, if you're just enjoying the videos, I'd like you to continue watching them by making sure that you subscribe. And if you like the video, click like down over there. And to let me know that you guys made it all the way to the end of this video, I'd like you to leave a comment below, and I'd like you to use USB somewhere in your comments. So either uh, either um, USB or bus or universal, you know, something that lets me know that you made it all the way to the very end of this video because I really appreciate it and I love it when you guys do listen to me ramble on. So anyways, until next time everybody, have a nice week. Bye.